In this video, we're going to take a look at the three power rules and one warning to be careful of along the way. The first power rule is called the power of a power when we have an exponent raised to another exponent. If this is the case, we look at the fact that a squared means a times a and the cube means it's going to be there three times. That a times a being there three times gives us a total of six a's multiplied together or a to the sixth. We might notice a quicker way to do this problem would have been to take a and then multiply those exponents together because we've got two of them there three times to get our answer much quicker. Before we look at some examples where this works out, we'll look at the other two power rules as well because they work together quite nicely. Here we have this parentheses a, b and then it's there three times a, b, a, b. Notice when we do this, the factor of a is there three times and the factor of b is also there three times. This is called the power of a product rule where we have this a, b cubed and that cubed outside the parentheses can be put onto each factor. It is very important that we're putting it onto each factor and not terms. Notice the a and b are multiplied together. A common error I see students do is when we have things added together, they try also to distribute the m through and get a to the m plus b to the m. However, this does not work. This is wrong. We cannot do it when there is addition between any of the fa between any of the pieces, only when we have factors multiplied together. Beware of this error. That's the so that completes the power of a product rule. The power of a quotient rule is really similar where we've got a over b and it's there three times. And you'll notice that means we've got a cubed in the numerator and three b's or b cubed in the denominator. This is very similar to the power of a product rule when we have a power of a quotient. It can go onto each factor as well. But again, this process only works if there is no addition or subtraction in the fraction. All right, now that we've looked at these three power rules, the power of a product where we multiply the exponents, the power of a power, the power of a product where we put the power on each factor and the power of a quotient where again we put the power on each factor, let's take a look at some examples. In this first example, x cubed y z squared, we have a fourth power outside the parentheses. Because it's all multiplied, we can put that fourth power onto each factor and as we do, we'll multiply the exponents, giving us x to the three times four or twelve, y to the fourth and z to the two times four or eight. Similarly, in this next example, we've got a squared outside the parentheses of a cubed b over c to the eighth, d to the fifth. Because it's all multiplied, we can put that power onto each factor as well. As we do, we'll multiply the exponents giving us a to the sixth, three times two, b squared over c to the sixteenth, eight times two, d to the tenth, five times two. This last example is one I see many common errors on. We're cubing the four x squared y to the fifth. Because it's all multiplied, we put the cube onto each factor. However, we need to remember the cube is an exponent and the four is a base. This means we have four cubed or sixty-four. Be careful, this does not mean four times three and get twelve. We do, however, multiply exponents together giving us x to the two times three or six and y to the five times three or fifteen to get our final answer.